Hi everyone, it's Pin Giraffe and today I will be talking about Beasties, which is a 2D monster turn-based puzzle game. So the first thing I want to go into is right away the battle system. The battle system is kind of like the match tree kind of thing. So as you can see, you kind of walk into the grass, uh, just walk around the town, kind of the classic Pokemon thing, get into a wild battle. Um, and as you can see, there's just a bunch of match tree puzzles. And what you have to do is obviously match tree, right? But there are a couple of things that make this game quite interesting in the combat. First of all, I would say it's kind of asynchronous because both you and your opponents use the same puzzle board. Therefore, if you use, uh, if you match tree to set up a huge combo, that combo can be used by the opponent. So, you gotta be smart about it. Secondly, uh, from all the colors, the gray kind of circles are the attack, whereas the other ones charge the abilities. So, for example, uh, on the left I can see that my first uh, monster has a green triangle and 0 out of 10. So, if I collect 10 triangles, I will be able to use the ability. Similarly, uh, the opponents have red squares and the purple diamonds so there are multiple strategies to this game so kind of you want to charge your abilities you want to attack you want to also maybe get the purple so that the opponent doesn't get it you know so there's a lot of elements like that um the each monster has a type so as you can see the monsters on the right are kind of like the rock type um mine i have the squid on the top it's water the second one is nature so there is type damage effectiveness as, as well when they use the abilities and attacks so that is also an element of that and so that i think is a good overview of the battle and once they reach zero the kind of battle you know ends let's go to the main purpose of the game so you kind of have a couple of missions to do, so for example, find this missing person, etc. So, you know, you're gonna be exploring around town, um, mining a couple of woods or, or kind of for resources for the missions. And then you can come back to the town and you can talk to Elma here and she will heal your monsters back up. And you can talk to Eric who will kind of repair your pickaxe so you can go back and mine some more. And the most important um, of all, it's not the shop, I'm not even gonna bother with the shop, it's, which is great, you know, but down here we have Riley, and Riley will help you manage the beasts and also level up. Yes, that's right, you level up using items and not using experienced methods, unlike similar monster catching games. First of all, let's let's take a look at how you manage the beasts. So you have up to four that you can take with you and the rest will go into Riley's. Now, as you can see, I have kind of nine um, beasties in my habitats and each of them have abilities. They have the stats, attack, defense, HP. Um, and you might notice that some monsters like the squid, one of them has the yellow uh, shape, the other one has the red triangle. So the shape that they can get to activate abilities varies. So when you're catching these monsters, you might be trying to make sure that you're not using the same, you're not getting beasties that utilize the same puzzle pieces. So you make sure you kind of charge your abilities as much as possible. I think that's one of the things I try to pay attention when you kind of creating a team, as well as having a diverse set of typings. Next up is leveling. So you use Dawn Essences uh, to create these Dawn Plates and basically you can choose whether you want to improve the attack, defense, HP or ability. Uh, the ability is straightforward, it buffs the ability, the attack is the damage. Now the difference between HP and defense is that defense recharges between every fight, however HP does not. So if you have a lot of HP you can take some damage and as long as it's not broken you will be able to kind of go into the next fight full health here yeah, because the, the shield is repaired. There are some nice quality of life things. 
So one of the things I experienced was that like walking felt a bit slow, but then I discovered that there's there are these teleport runes. So you can, once you find these uh, stones, you can actually interact with them and get teleported. And that will kind of help you get around faster. And I love that. It's less walking because walking felt slow and you get into wild, lots of wild encounters. And sometimes you don't want that. So yeah, here's a lot of teleporting. Overall, it's a very atypical kind of monster collecting because you don't level up using experience but you need items. Um, the battle is obviously a puzzle, it's not like the standard camp base, but from a combat perspective I do really enjoy it and there are some abilities that are quite nice, for example, um, disabling the charge ability of the opponent, so you know. Um, that kind of can be strategic and you're using the same puzzle, which I think is very fresh for the puzzle-like um, combat, which I, I don't think I've seen before, to be honest, and that really interested me. It does feel a bit too casual, um, you know, the story was okay, it's not a fast pace, it's, you know, chill. I think it's an enjoyable game. Although I would have expected a couple more monster catching kind of elements into this game. But overall, you know, it's enjoyable. And I I I would like to see some more kind of interaction with the battle. Um because I think it can get repetitive. There's not as much variety. But it's kind of like, you know, you, you do the story and it's kind of one and done. Whereas I feel like it could you could do something casual, like um, continue the gameplay. I don't know. That's how I feel, you know. But thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this kind of brief video about the game. Uh, if it interests you, it's now out on Switch and it should be out on Steam on the 27th of July. Thank you for watching, bye bye.